Welcome to the Shoulder Longevity video series. My name is Dr. Teresa Larson. I'm a Marine Corps veteran and a doctor of physical therapy. And this video in particular is on managing shoulder dysfunction. Here's what you're gonna learn. Who gets shoulder issues? What are the common causes? And what does posture have to do with it? And what is gonna keep your shoulders healthy? So who's excited? So here's the thing, shoulder discomfort is a common complaint for most humans, to include maybe you, definitely veterans and active duty military, and a lot of civilians. Here, we offer some information on shoulder discomfort to decrease the mystery and fear associated with this common condition and empower viewers to take action through regular movement routines and self-care habits that support shoulder longevity and musculoskeletal health. Our self-care is our best health care. So who gets shoulder discomfort? Well, around 70% of veterans in a small sample reported discomfort in their bodies in the past two months. And 50% of those marked that they were having issues related to their shoulders. In the military, increasing age and being male both increase the likelihood of shoulder issues alongside long-term overuse and under-recovery from manual labor, repetitive movements, vibration, or high-load training environments. Psychosocial factors can influence shoulder discomfort as well as including job-related stress, work dissatisfaction, non-job-related stressors, and poor social support. So think home life and hobbies. So you might be wondering, how much does posture matter here? The most current research suggests that our upper back posture is not as important as we once thought. What? People with rounded upper backs have about the same amount of shoulder discomfort as people with straighter upper backs. Though it's worth noting that a straighter upper back allows your shoulders to reach more fully overhead. What seems to be the most important is the amount of time we spend in certain positions. A greater amount of sedentary time, especially computer time, has been associated with both neck and shoulder discomfort and generalized body tension. Can you relate? This should make sense, as our bodies were made to move not to be still in one place for hours and hours. Holding any joint in one position for hours at a time is likely to feel so uncomfortable and make you stiff after a while. Think about holding a fist for an hour, then uncurling your hand. This is similar to holding our neck still and our shoulders at our sides when sitting for a long period of time in front of our computers. Often our shoulders, tendons, and muscles will let us know when we need to move out of a specific position, usually through sensation of muscle tightness, dull aching, or muscle cramping, or even joint stiffness. But it's a good practice to get moving before our bodies start to complain. So the general rule of thumb is every 25 minutes. Again, before our bodies start to complain. It can also be helpful to get moving first thing in the morning since our bodies have been relatively still all night or even gently before bed to help our bodies calm down, aka downregulate and de-stress from the day. Movement doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to take more than a few minutes and I know you have a few minutes to feel loosened up and energized. So check out the videos in this video series for several shoulder specific strength and mobility routines led by yours truly. So what else can I do, can you do, to keep your shoulders healthy? Well, many of the recommendations for general musculoskeletal health are going to be important here. This includes addressing smoking habits, obesity, sleep problems, as best as possible, and nourishing our bodies with the nutrients they need to repair each day. Our muscles, tendons, and cells are constantly breaking down and rebuilding. 
and they need the proper recovery and building blocks to do so. Look, regular movement and upper body strengthening is also protective for our shoulders as having strong, flexible shoulders and can make it a lot easier for our joints to handle surprise scenarios like lifting a child or grandchild, doing lawn work, or catching our balance when we are gonna trip. When dealing with bodily discomfort, we can also affect our bodies and our minds because they do go together, feel by incorporating relaxation or stress management techniques and mind-body practices like mindfulness, yoga, and some of the mindful movements that I'm gonna be showing in this video series. You got this.